dust-choked runways in Kuje Abuja. A sleek, bat-winged shadow slices the horizon. The flying wing drone, Breek UAS's crown jewel, humming with lethal grace. Sweat glistened engineers in a humming workshop, hands blurring over composite molds, soldering circuits that pulse like veins. This isn't Hollywood CGI, it's raw, Nigerian steel-bending reality. In this video expose, pieced from Brisha's own blistering footage and eyewitness dispatches, we peel back the hangar doors on Africa's drone insurgency. From unibody genesis to heart-pounding flight tests, Breek isn't just building machines, it's forging Africa's middle finger to the West's skyward empire. Buckle up. This is the tech that's got Pentagon planners sweating and Lockheed execs chain-smoking. And yeah, it's bad news. Apocalypse-level bad. For the geopolitical puppeteers who've long treated Africa as their resource piñata. Let's rewind the tape. Brief UAS didn't sprout overnight like some VC-fueled Silicon Valley mirage. Registered in 2021 amid Nigeria's Boko Haram quagmire, this 10-hectare behemoth in Abuja's Kuje district started as a defiant spark, a band of Igbo-rooted innovators sick of importing $10 million predators that arrived late, overpriced, and laced with CIA backdoors. Fast forward to April 3rd, 2025. The unveil of the Demisa combat drone and homegrown precision-guided bombs lit the fuse. Not assembled from Shenzhen scraps. No, these are birthed from Nigerian CAD wizardry, molded in local autoclaves, coded in Abuja server farms. The video we're dissecting? A visceral montage starting in the design labs where Lt. Nkamdilim Anulika Ofodile, that Igbo firebrand, the woman who etched Demisa's DNA, sketches unibody blueprints on glowing screens. Unibody? That's the holy grail of drone architecture, a seamless monocoque fuselage blending carbon fiber weaves and epoxy resins into a featherweight predator that shrugs off 9G maneuvers and radar pings. There's no bolted-together fragility here. Breek's process actually fuses the airframe and internals in one brutal pour. This slashes weight by about 30%, while seriously amping up structural integrity. Whether for kamikaze dives or those long ISR loiters over the bandit-riddled Sambisa forest. So, let's zoom in on the workshop frenzy. Frames from Breek's August 11th, 2025 X-Drop yeah, they really capture it raw. Technicians in crisp blue smocks, their faces lit by the blue hiss of soldering irons, wiring neural nets right into Striver's belly. In one clip, a young Edo engineer, sleeves rolled up, laminates the flying wing's blended wing body that low observable curve echoes B-2 bombers, but scaled down for Sahel skirmishes. And those composites? They're sourced from Lagos refineries' excess polymers, then cured in vacuum bags that hum, honestly, like angry bees. From raw billet to bonded beast, we don't import vulnerability, we export sovereignty. Next station, Avionics Bay. Here, the team, a 50-strong mosaic of Igbo precision, Offadil's squad from Anugu Tech Hubs, Yoruba coders debugging AI evasion algorithms, and Hausa mechanic stress testing actuators, integrates payloads. Laser designators for PGMs, EO and IR turrets that spot an AK-47 at 5 kilometers in midnight haze, all synced to Nigerian SAT constellations for jam-proof feeds. But blueprints don't win wars, skies do. Enter flight testing, the video's pulse-pounding climax. Roll to October 17th, 2025. Breek's test range, a scorched expanse ringed by baobabs. The Demisa prototype, unibody gleaming under floodlights. VTOL skyward with a turbine whine that rattles ribs. Frames capture the hybrid propulsion, electric props for silent hover, jet burst for 200 km per hour sprints. Pilots in ground control, screens ablaze with telemetry, push envelopes, endurance runs clocking 12 hours on palm-derived biofuels, autonomy suites dodging simulated SAMs via onboard machine learning. 
One Heartstopper, a mock strike on a mock-up convoy. The drone ghosts in, EOPod locking a so-called HVT. Then, boom, a laser-guided mock warhead craters the target. Precision without pilots, power without patrons. Government Brass? They're in force. Gen CG Musa, eyes like flint, nods approval as data scrolls confirm 98% hit rates. No Western observers. This is Africa's show. Ophotal's not solo in this forge. Her right hand? Ingrisir Chukwudi Easy, Igbo avionics ace from Namdi Azikiwe University, who coded the Striver's swarm logic, letting a dozen drones dance in formation, sharing intel like a neural hive. Flanking them? Aisha Bello, Northern Electronics whiz tuning RF jammers, and Victor Okafor, mechanical maestro from Unilag, who pioneered the unibody molds using 3D printed jigs for zero waste fab. So, this crew, about 70% of them are under 35, all trained in house after Western universities, you know, basically ghosted their scholarships. They're grinding through 18 hour shifts fueled by Jollof rice and, well, a steady stream of jihadist threat reports. We're not just reverse engineering Reapers here, we're actually eclipsing them. Making something cheaper, tougher, and, most importantly, ours. And their ethos? Well, it's bespoke brutality. These are drones built for Nigeria's chaos, dust-choked rotors designed for Lake Chad patrols, thermal blooms lighting up Fulani herder clashes, and munition bays ready for Boko Haram's Toyota hordes. Now comes the geopolitical gut punch. This video, honestly, isn't just tech porn, it's a declaration of decoupling. Nigeria's $2.5 billion defense spend? It used to get funneled into Uncle Sam's F-35 scraps and those French Mirage maintenance traps. But now, it's being rerouted to Breek's assembly lines. The military-industrial complex, that trillion-dollar Frankenstein of Raytheon, Boeing, and BAE, just hemorrhaged a market. Imagine this for a second. No more $20,000 per hour Hellfire imports when Demisa loiters for just pennies on the Naira, striking with precision-guided munition clusters forged from Ajao Kuda steel. Western hawks screech about proliferation risks, but honestly, let's just call their bluff. It's pure envy. Africa is finally unhooking the chains. No more AFRICOM strings on aid, no more so-called strategic partnerships that veto arms and deliver human rights lectures, all while arming Egypt's butchers. So, BRIC's output? We're talking scalable swarms for ECOWAS operations, exportable to Sahel siblings who are ditching those French foreign legion leeches. And the bad news? Well, it's honestly catastrophic for some. The unipolar playground is fracturing. Multipolar skies now mean it's Nigerian birds buzzing over resource grabs in the Gulf of Guinea, not American ones. But even worse? The hypocrisy hemorrhage. While Breach's April thunderclap and those October tests ripple through African feeds, with governors from Plateau's Mutfwang to Nasarawa's Sule jetting in for demos, the mainstream media? Yeah, crickets. And just contrast that with November 1st, 2025's circus. Trump, that orange oracle, blasting guns a blazing invasion threats against Nigeria to, quote, wipe out Islamic terrorists, slaughtering our cherished Christians. CNN loops it 24-7. BBC dissects the so-called existential threat to US values. Reuters frets over Abuja's watchlist edition. Protests erupt in Lagos, Yankee go home. Chants echoing, as Nigerians demand homegrown fixes, not drone drop liberators who bombed weddings in Kandahar. Trump's rhetoric? It's like a neocon fever dream, ignoring that Fulani Boko clashes are land wars, not jihadi Armageddon, and that Nigeria's army, Breach armed, neutralized 1,200 insurgents last quarter alone. But coverage, wall to wall, Breach's self reliance buried in tech blogs, if at all. Why? Because sovereignty scares the empire. 
A black lead breakout from the MIC's yoke? That's not democracy promotion, it's disruption. Trump's fast, vicious, sweet bluster gets prime time because it sells fear. Ophidile's unibody revolution, it sells independence, and that's poison to the narrative. Dig deeper, because this media blackout's no accident. It's a post-colonial playbook 101, amplify chaos, mute mastery. Remember Rwanda's homegrown recon drones back in 23? There were like crickets until poachers started dropping. Now with Breek scaling to 500 units per year by 2026, the silence just screams complicity. Nigerian X erupts. Hashtag Breek rising trends with 2 million views on that workshop vid. But, you know, Al Jazeera slots it after Gaza filler while Fox News pimps Trump's saber rattles as tough love hypocrisy. It's basically the West's oxygen clothed as global security. It's really a neo-colonial chokehold invade for terror, but embargo arms when victims arm themselves. Yet here's the twist. The video's coda. A slow motion shot of flying wing banking into the sunset overlaid with Ophodile's vow. Our skies, our rules. It's more than just a statement, it's a strategy. Breek is ecosystem, it integrates with NASA RDA satellites for beyond line of sight operations. And it feeds data to a national C4ISR grid that's got Chinese firms, well honestly, salivating for joint venture bids, but all on Nigerian terms. Future plays include kamikaze variants for drone-on-drone -drone dogfights and hypersonic scouts for Niger Delta patrols. Government buy-in? It's locked. 50 billion Naira procurement pipeline, according to leaked Ministry of Defense memos, with exports eyed for Algeria and Ethiopia. The real game-changer? Cost, Demisa, at $250,000 per unit versus $30 million Reapers. It's scalable, sanction-proof, and, yeah, African. Provocative truth. This is brutal tech. Unfeeling eyes in the sky, unerring strikes from afar. But in Abuja's hands, it's justice. Igbo ingenuity leading a pan-Nigerian charge. Government fists finally unclenching from Western palms. Trump's threats? Just bluster from a bully sensing the shift. Brief UAS isn't just changing the game, it's ending it for the old guard. Africa's not begging, it's building. The chains? Shattered. The skies? Reclaimed. Watch the video. Feel the thunder. The revolution's airborne, and it's Niger black and proud.